enjoy the game. Ted and Yogi on the other side. All right, Ashley, thanks and welcome to Folsom Field again, where, yeah, Ralphie Six. We're told the votes are in, and Ember is Ralphie Six's nickname. <laughs> that doesn't work. It's Ralphie. Yeah. I'm sorry. Presented by 76 on this Saturday begins in Boulder. And yes, it is Arizona. The big stories, they have a little number next to their name. And it's been a long time coming. It is the true confirmation of the turnaround of Arizona football, Yogi. And yet they're still in the mix. It's a long shot, but they're in the mix to be in the champ game. And a huge reason they're in the mix is this team has been surging since Noah Fafita has become their quarterback. Basically, every time he plays, he's the freshman of the week in the Pac-12. And a big reason is because of his teammate receiver from high school to now, Tetaro McMillan. How about that on a third down against, at the time, ranked Washington State climb in the pocket. Today, I think you'll see a lot of man-to-man -man cover. Tetaro McMillan, can Noah Fafita sit in the pocket and find his his favorite target. And then when he does have to slide out of the pocket, what's been so impressive about Fafita Ted is the location of where he throws the ball. I mean, you cannot do it any better than this. Look at the ISO shot, the only spot away from the defender. Expect T-Mac to go up against Travis Hunter all afternoon. This is a matchup that you pay to see. This is the last home game for Colorado. Here's the goal today. Can Shadur Sanders walk off this field? Yeah, what's his jersey going to look like, right? How many grass stains are going to be on it? That is the biggest goal for this program. Now they got a new offensive coordinator in Pat Shore for the second straight week. They know they have to protect him. Those numbers are ridiculous. They're on pace to give up the most sacks in the history of college football in a 12-game season. So you'll see an extra offensive lineman. You'll see them chip with the running back. A little bit of usage with the tight end. And he knows. He knows he's got to play on time. He's got to get the ball out. Because Arizona, like every other opponent recently of Colorado, they are going to come after Shador Sanders. Well, we've circled the stage for a long time, so we finally get to be here to see the enthusiasm, the excitement of Colorado Buffs football this year. In the strictly football sense, may I suggest we are blessed. Pac-12 football is presented by 76. We're on the driver's side. By Old Trapper, what's your beef? And by Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve. No, he ain't, that's for sure. And uh, Deion Sanders finishing up the home schedule. September was a fabulous month. And as uh, I think a lot of people suspect it might happen, October began to turn, November reality has settled in. Yeah, we'll find out how they respond to their recent reality. Yeah. There's father and son. And a sellout, which has been the story all year for Colorado. Sold out crowd, great just to get fun to see this atmosphere. Arizona's the team coming in here with an awful lot. If they keep this road thing going, they stay in the rankings, they stay in the, at least keep a heartbeat going to possibly be in the Pac-12 championship game. They have already made themselves eligible for a Gronk or Weedwhacker or whatever bowl game. The more they win, the better the bowl game gets. Arizona deferred after the kick. They bang it out of bounds for the touchback. Yogi, give us a buffs checklist. Well, number one, protect Shador Sanders. How do you do it, Ted? You be complimentary on offense. They have to run the football, or at least try to. They have had minimal to any run game the last two weeks. Right, when you run the football, get it to Travis Hunter in the passing game. They need to ride one of the best players in the country. And then tempo. Look, the offense has changed over the last two weeks with a new coordinator, but you can't eliminate tempo. you got to pick your spots when you get a first down how do you find a couple easy completions for Sanders now this is the formation Colorado used the bulk of their game last week no tight end four wide receivers which would seem to think that Sanders has to do that he has to get the ball out fast and gets it to Hunter but Arizona tackles for a very short game and talking to Deion Sanders yesterday talked about how early in the game what are you trying to do for your quarterback your son he goes we got to find an early completion they found an early one, but not for a lot of yards. And again, just five blocking, which increases the likelihood that that's going to happen. And that's what's interesting. Bill Norton with the deflection there. 
given that Colorado has changed things. You'll see Norton right here at 45. Watch him time up the quick game. That's perfect. That's perfect timing. And look, when Shador Sanders is feeling a lot of pressure, he's trying to get it out in three-step rhythm. One, two, three, ball out. D linemen are timing that as well. Now, Sivion Wilkerson empties out of the backfield. So again, just five to protect, four to rush, and they're right in. But Sanders gets away. But is tracked down the retrace by the defensive front. And Sanders has stopped well short of the line to gain. Take a look at Isaiah Ward, number 90, right here. Right here, watch these two work together. Ward's a little twist, watch those hands. And then there's a dropper from Kangaika 93. That's a really nice job of defensive scheming on the pressure from Johnny Nansen. Well, that's just, I mean, you gotta, you gotta call that. That's just not good blocking at all. I mean, this is, it's just why you say, I don't know how Shooter Sanders walks off the field. That's not a good omen for Colorado on their first series. Mark Bassett, the punter, Jacob Cowling, fair catches. And so after a three and out, Wildcats offense will get on the field and our performance award presented by Next Steve. Freshman of the week is going to be freshman of the year, no doubt, Noah Fafita. Yeah, he's got pretty much everybody's vote. And what's been so impressive is, one, how he processes this offense. Number two, how they haven't changed since he became the starter after Jane Delora got injured. Then number three, it's the stages, right? His first road start was at USC. Now he comes here. I don't think this environment will impact Noah Fafita like it would most freshman quarterbacks. Well, here's a chance because Arizona's offense has clicked, obviously. Colorado's defense has struggled in this. Fafita, look at the difference. Just, he throws the ball away, but look at the difference in protection. Yeah. Stark on the first play. Yeah, well, it's going to be interesting to watch Colorado, Ted. They feel like they can get home. They can get some pressure on Noah Fafita. They only rush three. They drop eight. Never get anywhere near Fafita, but there's nowhere for him to go with the ball. Nine games for Colorado this year. They've allowed touchdowns on the first possession six of the nine games. And that's a, uh, that's a frustrating Arizona trying to capitalize. The beat up buys time. And then a swarm door. So that's coverage. Fafita got out there, did a great job to buy extra time, and eventually Chaz Wallace records the Colorado sack. First snap, they rush three in Colorado. Next snap, they rush five. Here comes a third down. I'd expect another five or six coming from Charles Kelly, their defensive coordinator. So third and 12, and it's loud. Students really roaring. Keep an eye on Tetro McMillan. Slot to the left. Jonah Coleman leaks out. Good spin by Fafita going to his left. To the sideline. McMillan, does he get a foot down? No. Good defensive play there. That was Jaden Milliner Jones that made sure McMillan, even though he caught the ball, did not get a foot. His defense playing hard. Tried. Nice job, to your point, Milner Jones, making sure he's tackling him while he's in the air, pushing him out of bounds. And McMillan could, he had to get the left one down. He couldn't. Yep. And so Arizona goes three and out on its first possession. Xavier Weaver deep. Kyle Austin Dorp to punt for Arizona. And he bangs one away. Not a lot of hang time here, so Weaver with a good chance. Yeah, boy, he's going to take advantage. No! Stripped the ball, but what a fortunate bounce. How lucky is this? Wow. Well, a crazy play that started with not a very good punt that gave Weaver an excellent chance at a comeback, or at a run back, rather, and then what a fortunate bounce on this fumble. Yes, Bill Norton, watch him. He's got to tackle the ball, put his arm right in there, punches it out, and then to your point, perfect bounce. And you're thinking, oh, Colorado might have a big return, maybe for a touchdown here. And can Geica with a with a touchdown save and tackle, you could argue right there. Ball bouncing right into the hands of Jordan Dominic. So 
It is Colorado with that special teams win. They start at the Arizona 36. Off play action. Good dart by Sanders to the middle. And complete to Antonio. And here's Colorado in business. They're in the red zone. Nice job by the little RPO, making it a clean picture for Shador Sanders to a big body target in Antonio, a six foot four, about 230. Interesting, Wilkerson, block guy, 210 pound running back, gets the carry here. He's only had 26 carries this year. Native of Chicago, of course, Colorado just doesn't really run. They've basically not even tried. They're almost 60% pass in their play call this year. And they face second and seven. And again, Pat Shermer, longtime football guy, former NFL head coach. Son of a legendary coach himself and Fritz Shermer. Pat Shermer calling the plays. Sanders 10, Sanders is home. Touchdown, Colorado. It's a great job of Shador Sanders. Here comes the pressure. They're all at different levels. I Meaning the defensive lineman, one is at five yards in the backfield, one is three, one is at the line of scrimmage, and that is always advantage quarterback. Shador Sanders sees the running lane, tucks it, shows his athleticism. Touchdown, Colorado. Well, Shadur Sanders has had to run for his quarterback life a lot this year. And he did so there for his fourth rush touchdown. Alejandro Mata kicks the point. So that's a win again on the special teams. The good punt return sets this drive up. Well, better protection on that drive. And whenever it broke down, Shador Sanders says, hey, I got you. I am him. Time for our offense to get rolling with our legs. Number two does it, seven nothing buffs. Touchdowns for Equality presented by Pacific Premier Bank and Paycor. Each partner donates $100 for every touchdown scored by a Pac-12 team. So it's 200 bucks for a score. All proceeds donated to the United Negro College Fund and the National Urban League. And hey, we're closing in on 100K. How nice that is. Thanks again to Pacific Premier Bank and Paycor. So Colorado needed only three plays after starting at the Arizona 36. And kick off for a touchback here. And Arizona will regroup for the second possession. We should also mention Michael Wiley, not expected to play today. He's here and available, but Jed Fish thinking uh, not likely to go. Coleman, DJ Williams, Speedy Luke still get plenty of depth there. Yeah, they feel good about the run game, this offensive line. Raymond Polito is back, the right guard position. Well, the four offensive linemen but been a much better alive for Arizona. Four of them have been Ironman. They've played almost every snap this year. A motion by Lamonius Craig to block for McMillan. And McMillan takes advantage, runs that out across the 35. That'll be a first down gain. Picks up a nice block from Montana Lamonius Craig. See him right here in the slot. Remember, Lamonius Craig was at Colorado. He finished up spring ball here and then transferred to Arizona. No, he's motivated for this one, and a nice job getting the ball in the hands of McMillan. Well, Otis Craig made himself something when he, he had a great yeah, spring he game here. And that basically took the spot left open by Dorian Singer at Arizona. Quick snap out of the huddle, deep shot to Lamonius Craig, and he holds it. Lamonius Craig is down inside the 35. Talk about accuracy. That's right in front, in front of Travis Hunter. You can only put it in one place. It's an interception or a completion. Lamonius Craig climbs a ladder. Big play there to the Colorado 32. Coleman runs straight ahead, breaking tackles, and he's all the way to the 20. Before Trevor Woods makes the tackle, 41 yards on the big pass play. Coleman tacks on another first down run. Ted, you reference this offensive line. I, I think it's the strength of this team. It's what's allowing them to be in contention 
for a spot to get to Las Vegas. It's allowed them to win a lot of these recent games. There's Coleman going stretch left, and Coleman runs it down to 10 for a first round. Let's we'll see where the mark is right at the line of the game. Keep an eye on Josh Baker here. They're going to pull the offensive lineman. He's their center right there. They're going to bring two offensive linemen. Baker stumbles a little bit, but catches his feet. Gets enough of the defender to allow Coleman to get some positive yards for second and short. That's the credit, this offensive line, because they got four of the five have been Ironman. The right guard, Polito's barely played this year, and Leif Magnuson has been the guy that's really handled that role. So it is first down just outside the 10. D.J. Williams on the carry. And the Buffs stacked that up. And actually, I'm sorry, that was second down. It was not ruled a first down on Coleman's run. So now it's going to be third down. I'll tell you what, it's been fun to study Amari McNeil, number 88, defensive lineman. Get some penetration on that step. They need him to make another play here. So third down and a yard. Arizona has to think of this as two downs to get a yard. Can they get the short yardage yard with Williams the running back? Not yet. Timeout, Arizona. All right, so Jed Fish recalculating things on the play card. Let's see what he comes up with when we return. Welcome back. And the play and the route that got him down to this part of the field, Ted, is Montana Limonius Craig, the transfer from Colorado. It's a nice angle route, and the timing of the throw, tucking it away from pressure against the all-everything Travis Hunter, pretty impressive. Whew. Well, that's now the third and one. Two tight ends in out of the timeout. That's cowing in motion. And the run, D.J. Williams, huge hole for the Arizona touchdown. Third rush touchdown of the year for Williams. Watch Raymond Polito right here. The freshman, they just wash everything down that way, and it's a walk for Williams. This offensive line, they move that front with physicality. They love that run in Arizona, just a zone scheme, wash the entire thing down. Tyler Loop out for the extra point. So a nice answer by Arizona, 75-yard drive. That big pass to Lamonius Craig was the key of the six plays on this 57-degree gorgeous November day. High in the rock. It's been uh, interesting, Yogi, during both the timeout before Arizona's touchdown and now during this pause before the kick. Shadur Sanders is on the field running back, dropping back, trying to stay loose. Yeah, well, look, he's been taking a physical beating the last couple of weeks. He's talked about it. Coach Sanders, his father, has talked about it. And... Early on in this game, it's been a physical one regarding the pressure coming from Arizona for him. All right, another. What here ought to be routine if you want to. Just kick the thing out the back every single time, if that's your choice. So Schroeder Sanders back out for Colorado. One thing, Yogi, when you look, you know, obviously everybody has access to really good data. Today, Shadur Sanders' numbers throwing deep balls. <laughs> really impressive. But that's why a lot of NFL people have been blown away this year, and especially the deep ball, as they say, the football thing outside the numbers, literally outside the numbers painted on the field. Yeah, that full Really field. impressive. Yeah, from his hash to outside, the numbers at the bottom of the screen. He, he's so accurate. When we came to visit in spring, Ted, it was obvious. He can anticipate, he's accurate. He showcased that all season, even when under duress. All right, trying to run here. Wilkerson got outside. Gets, gets the edge and pushes it out for a good first down run. The, the challenge with Colorado is just their lack of tight ends. So you see them there try to use number four, Javon Antonio, as an extra blocker. They bring in an extra O lineman on this snap here, number 91. And they've struggled running the football. 91 Ted is their backup center. See him out there as an extra old lineman trying to get some help because of the lack of the tight end position. Oh boy, that would be an important thing for them on pass protection too. Just hard to fathom. 
As there's another run to Wilkerson, jammed up nicely by Arizona. With all the hits Sanders has taken, it's hard to believe they would continue like they did in the first series with just five. I mean, you have to give your offensive linemen, their five clearly can't handle it themselves. Help them. Yeah, well, I think that's what we've seen with yeah. Hank Zelinskis being in there, the freshman center who has a start earlier this season. But, but their challenge is bodies. I mean, their starting tight end is on the field now, Michael Harrison, number 87. And he's a walk-on tight end, moved to basically a big slot receiver. All right, here's the short third down, pass play. Sanders fires one. Nice job, and there he... A little bit of a roll, just enough of the move to buy time and find Weaver. Yeah, really impressive of standing in the pocket right amid all the pressure he's been under. Nice job clearing out from 87 here, and then right underneath comes Weaver. Good combination route. 13 yards. Weaver runs almost primarily on the right side of the offensive formation. Matching up there with Takario Davis of Arizona. Shermer, at least in this first quarter, is trying to see if they can establish some ground presses, force the defense to at least respect the possibility. Yeah, and the majority of their runs, you've seen Pat Shermer as he's calling it now the second week in a row, they're using whether it's 87 Michael Harrison or the extra offensive lineman in across the formation to just try to get an extra body blocking in the run game. Now they go the three wide outs all go to the left, including Weaver. The wide side of the field, that's where Sanders wants to go. No, and he held the ball. Wow. Taylor Upshaw, they meet for the first time after a week where the social media engagement got a little snippy, and Upshaw almost pounds this ball away. Watch the hack. Here comes Upshaw. Wham. Trying, yep, with that right arm of the club. Nice job of feeling that for Sanders, yeah. tucking it and climbing underneath. That's an indication he must have some pretty strong hands yeah. to hold that ball. He, he's been so impressive physically, anticipating pressure, trying to find his way out of it. Third and five, four rush. Sanders back, 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 back. Now steps up. He's going to run for it, and he won't get it. What a terrific tackle in the open field for Arizona. That is Dalton Johnson, who has really shined the games we've seen this year. So look at this pocket. That's it right there. Watch him stay within the integrity of it. And then here comes Johnson. Perfect tackle. Head to the outside. Drives his legs on contact to force Colorado into a fourth down. Since we've seen Arizona almost every week this year, I can say I didn't know about Dalton Johnson before the year. Jeff Fish said it yesterday. He is really shined. And uh, that's a, just a brilliant tackle to bring up fourth and two. And now timeout. Arizona's going to take a timeout. The Colorado did have the punter on the field. And I'm wondering if Jed Fish might have suspected something. Don't know. But anyway, yeah. it's a timeout, which means the Bobcats have just one left for the half. I mean, just to kind of follow up on Dalton Johnson, too, I think we're seeing this group in Arizona these guys are playing with such confidence. That's what Jed Fish talked about when talking about third year safety out of Texas. He's the communicator on the back end, but as the year has gone on, to your point, as we've seen him, he is always around the football. He's a true thumper, and his confidence is an all time high. Great example is an open field tackle. All right, so again, Colorado lines up in the punt formation. Mark Bassett, the punter, Jacob Cowing deep. And they do snap it, and Bassett does drop the nose and angle it to the side, and it is going to get down inside the five. Nicely done. Excellent punt there. So that justifies the decision. Arizona's going to start it at their own two. Bassett's been having a heck of a couple weeks. Nice job last week, and how about this one? Perfect placement. If Arizona's going to take the lead in this game. They're going to have to drive the whole field. That's a win on special teams for the Buffs. Yep. Well, that's what you want. Your outside men to be down there waiting for the ball. It took a perfect bounce. And so Fafita has to start with the Wildcat defense from the two. Single back deep is Coleman. A 
and this is what Colorado has struggled with on defense. They're allowing an average of four and a half yards a rush against them this year, and it's again that's not sustainable for, for winning football. Yeah, they, they're they're active. They play really hard, but they don't necessarily have the mass on the defensive front. Now there's a good play, good defensive stop there. Coleman trying to pick his way out towards the 10. Down at the bottom there, that was the guy you're talking about, McNeil. Amari McNeil. Charles, don't call me Chip Kelly. <laughs> he was awesome in our meetings with him earlier this week. And here on a third down, backed up, I'd imagine Charles Kelly's going to bring some pressure. Expect it from the middle, Trevor Woods be in the lead at the inside backer position. Running back Coleman is offset. Cowing slot at the bottom. No motion. And Fafita's quick throw and he misses. McMillan on a quick in from the right side. Wow, just missed him. It's a really nice job of showing pressure. It's not there. Isolated in zone coverage against Travis Hunter. And I think Travis Hunter's eyes may have impacted Noah Fafita because it looked like man coverage at the snap. At the snap, he went and played zone. I don't know if Fafita anticipated man coverage, saw zone, and all of a sudden you saw that miss. That yeah, ball was out there. McMillan didn't get the arms out to see if he could pull it in. A little better punt this time back to Weaver. Gets the middle and gets about eight on the return. So once again, Colorado will start in Arizona territory. Hey, it's Veterans Day, but we're going to celebrate veterans and moms. CISO Uyunglele. U of A. U of A. Let's go, baby. Nice. Wow. That hurt. Shake and bake, baby! Yes! Yes! Let's go! <laughs> so good. Well, family affair, of course, three Uyunglele's in the conference this year. And on first down, there's your deep shot. The go route has worked for Colorado this year, and there it's going to be incomplete. And that's, you see the reaction of Hunter expecting the flag. Well, he runs right by Ephesians Prysock, and the ball isn't thrown out in front. It's underthrown, and Prysock does a nice job. See how he looks oh, back? Yeah. Most DBs don't look back, and then you have contact, yeah. and often a flag. He looks back at the last moment, knocks the ball down, no contact. Good Great call. no call. Good call, Yogi, exactly. Good call by Yogi that it was an excellent no call watching it there. That go route has been money for Colorado. Nine touchdown throws on that deep just go route this year. Again, I had evidence that Sanders throws the deep ball really well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that, you know, that was the first target to Travis Hunter. And I think when you talk to Colorado's coaches and you just watch their, their games, number 12 has got to continue to find ways to get the ball in his hands. I mean, he's playing so wow. much. He's doing everything. Yeah. Been a long time since we've seen a two-way player. I have to go back and look at the, how much Charles Woodson played on offense. He's the last one that really registers with me. Third down and five. Empty, and Sanders does get time. Well, there is a nice job by Colorado. Protected him enough, he found Hunter for a first down. Yeah, and I'd imagine Prysock is saying he ran by me on a play two snaps ago, so I'm going to play off, off coverage. And it's easy. Easy pickings right there from Sanders to his favorite target. Who, by the way, Ted, Travis Hunter's played in every snap other than one in this game so far. But he's got to be in shape, and this is the kind of day you can do it. It's beautiful in the mid 50s. A little bit of wind. Just a gorgeous day. Sanders, slight roll to the right. Drills it again. Oh, and there's a drop. Right there to Weaver, Xavier Weaver. Do a great job in protection. They move the offensive line. And this is something that often happens in terms of 
a conversion, but Weaver also has struggled at times with a couple drops this season. Got to have that one. So second and 10 at the Arizona 33. Pulls the ball back from Wilkerson, hits his man just short of the stick. It's going to be a short third down. Hunter on the catch, Prysock the tackle. Third and two. It's a nice job by this Colorado offense in terms of moving the pocket to get Shador Sanders outside of it or getting the ball out of his hand. I'm Arizona here. I got to add a little bit of pressure here. I'd play some press coverage on the outside. They've had success throughout the back half of this season playing press coverage against everybody. So Hunter comes out for this third down snap. Wilkerson, the running back, flag down. Stops the play. That's on on Colorado. Obviously, the play was stopped. Might be the receivers, Ted. Not really set. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense number 78, five-yard penalty. Third down. Our referee today, Craven Barrett. And now it's third and seven. Let's see if that uh, gets Hunter back on the field. Yes, it does. <laughs> Dylan Edwards going to come out as the running back. He had a carry earlier in this drive. There's Hunter in the slot. Sanders gets out. He's going to get the first down. Well, we're getting a, a pretty good idea in this first quarter how Shadur Sanders has to roll. Oh, yeah. If he's feeling any sort of threat, he's finding an outlet. I wouldn't be surprised to see Arizona implement a little bit of a spy. We've seen them run that package before this season against Colorado State and Cameron Ward. We start seeing some of their athletic linebackers come in because that's a few times now Sanders has gotten them. Yep. And that's what I mean. His legs have been vital all year. He's rolled his way to a touchdown and now to a first down in this opening quarter. Batted down again right in the face of Sanders comes the pressure. Norton and Uyunglele were both there. But Norton's going to be his second pass breakup of the quarter. He's got such experience. He's such a veteran. Talked to Johnny Nance and he said, our guys just love playing. They love being in the facility. They love studying. They love tendencies. And when you can't protect, like Colorado has had struggles with really all season, you can try to time up when the ball's out of the quarterback's hand. To the corner. Beautiful throw and a touchdown to Jimmy Horn. Matched up against Martel Irby. You called it, Ted, right in the only location possible. Perfect placement, great adjustment. Jimmy Horn Jr. finding the end zone. Well, nice play. And again, Colorado, both scoring drives have started on the Arizona side of the field. They've taken advantage with a 14-7 lead. Just great job of looking at coverage, saying, hey, I got an advantage on a corner route, throwing it away from the defender. Irby's trying, he puts his hands up late, never peeks at the ball. Horn's got it. And this team has been challenged to play with the passion they had in September. Pat Shermer, he's excited, he's showcasing the passion. Two touchdowns in the first quarter. Haven't seen that in a while with Colorado on offense. Jimmy Horn with sixth touchdown catch this year. I have a hard time seeing him here because uh, it's the tight sidelines in Folsom Field. Not a lot of room on the field. And if you were not on the field before the game, you weren't trying. <laughs> it was crazy. It is a spectacle, that's for the sure. The place is jammed. I mean, the place is jammed. But, uh, 
The, the pregame field and sideline for Colorado reminded me very much of USC when Yogi Roth was oh. in charge. Yeah. <laughs> All right, coming. Oh, and taking a big time hit with a flag down. Celestine on the return for Arizona. You'd see the hit take a toll on him. I think they're going to take a look at that and one. And the again. flag is clearly fairly well. Let's see. We'll wait and see. It's going to be on the hit by Robin Jacques Robinson. During the return, holding, no. receiving team, number 25. That's a 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Now the flag came far down the field, so it was not related to the hit. Penalty being cool. enforced from the dead ball no. spot. And Robinson is a defensive back. That's a good hit. Hard, but good. Yep. It is a physical game on kickoff. We do not see a lot of returns in college football, but when you do, we have seen some collisions this season. Well, that's why. We yeah, just saw that's the reason yeah. why. Again, uh, I know old, old crusty people like the kick return in the game, but every single study is it's indisputable the incredibly high percentage of what hap injuries that happen happen on kick plays kick off plays i should say all right so eight seconds to go in the quarter and cowing drops well the short pass game has been the key to arizona's Ride with Fafita as the quarterback. Two out of six so far. Colorado's done a nice job defensively, too. They haven't ran the same two defensive schemes in back to back plays all game thus far. Catch over the middle, Lamonius Craig. That'll be a first down for Arizona as the first quarter comes to an end. 15 yard game that is there. The end of the first quarter. All right, off to a good start for offense. Again, Colorado taking advantage. Two short field touchdown drives for the lead. Coach Shadur Sanders obviously hurting you with his arm and his legs there in the first quarter. What stood out to you and how do you try and slow him down here in the second? Yeah, well, he knew he was a very good quarterback and he's got all the tools, so we got to get some stops. We can't give him such good field position and uh, we got to drive down and score, tie this game up. Now, offensively, what do you want to see right here? A touchdown. All right, thanks, Coach. Thanks, Ted. Ted. That's why we do those. So you just get the one word answer. What better answer could there be? Hey, uh, he speaks on behalf a of every touchdown. Arizona fan. I <laughs> love it. All right, first half of the Cats at their own 28 as they get going here in the second quarter. Speedy Luke in the backfield now alongside Noah Fafita. And Colorado coming in with a run blitz off the corner. Luke is bottled up though, doesn't get very much. Taj Alston on the tackle for Colorado. So heavy, uh, just looking at how Colorado's defense has played this year, yo, personnel-wise, heavy defensive backs play six DBs a lot. Yeah, and like a lot of teams. Yeah, and Trevor Woods was a former safety. Now he's right. playing inside linebacker. Allows them to do a lot of different things, especially with him as the communicator. That again underscores that defensive line is not a strength for them. Quick throw, batted up to the ground, incomplete. So Fafita. And that's Trevor Woods on the pressure. This is nice. They bring a couple guys up the middle, Shiloh Sanders, and Woods comes off his block. A Jonah Savanea to put that right hand up in the ground. Hey, Yogi, we've talked about this since Mafita took over. That's the challenge for a quarterback who's not tall. Can he find the throwing lanes? And that was the number one thing Charles Kelly wanted to do. I'd imagine he does it again here. Bring pressure up the middle. He's got to find a way to avoid that. And I'm I keep an eye on this guy right here. Tetaro McMillan lined up against Travis Hunter. Over the middle, and this is going to be a good run there for a first down. Michael Wiley gets in the game. How about well, that? Well, yeah, Wiley makes a surprise appearance. 
A little delayed angle route. Nice job getting the block downfield from the center, Josh Baker. First down. Come on, we got to pay homage to the great Bill Walsh, the Texas route, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, too high there on the slant intended for McMillan. But the, and the reason I brought up the point about the the, the throwing angles, if you, if you look at what Fafita's done this year, his throws have been terrific in the middle of the field. Yep. Outside throws are not his strength right now. Yeah, he's been able to maneuver a yeah. little bit in the pocket, find yep. throwing lanes. And you ask him, he goes, I I've always been 5'9". I don't know any other way. Second and ten. Speedy Luke is again the back. Colorado bringing a lot of people, and Arizona can't run through it. They tried to see if they could run Luke through that wall of silver in front of Ari McNeil making the hit. I'll tell you what, McNeil is impressive because Arizona almost has them gashed in a run, and McNeil physically just uses his strength to get off the block to make a play. He's been their most productive interior defensive lineman. I gotta say, this is a better first half so far for the Colorado defense than they've seen in a lot. One big pass play is all that Arizona's hurt them with. Jonah Coleman in the back on third and eight. Late blitz coming. It's picked up, but Fafita's throws high, and he misses Cowan. Fafita's been off. I mean, the most off we've seen since he came in in the Stanford game and every start after that. The protection's picked up. Perfect job by Coleman, number three. And if there's one trait that Noah Fafita has been dramatically consistent in is his accuracy. His last three games, it's 78, 78, 79 percent from a yeah. completion percentage standpoint. Cool. Jed Fish and Jaden Delora both meet Fafita as he comes off the field. They're walking him back to the bench to talk with him as Austin Dwarf will pump for the third time for Arizona. Weaver on the nearest. Oh, Weaver made a tough catch there. Well, he didn't, but that was, that was dicey. 38 yard pump with no return. Yeah, this is part of the. Boy, the love of Colorado football this year. Merch equals cash. Well, Shadur Sanders has stayed upright through this first quarter plus and engineered two touchdowns. Yeah, this one's pretty impressive. Recognizing the coverage down the field, feeling the pressure, seeing a running lane, finds it, and showcasing his athleticism for a touchdown. And this one, he catches the defense slipping. Watch Martel Irby right here in the slot. He's communicating to his defensive back, and all of a sudden the ball is snapped. It gives Jimmy Horn Jr. a step on him, perfectly placed ball, another touchdown. So on first down, we'll swing pass full, and Anthony Hankerson, that ball not thrown accurately. Running back there, got caught in a bad spot, stumbles down. But Yogi, the first possession for Colorado, Arizona was in his face at every play, and since then, the Buffs have tightened things up. And the fascinating part is that, as you see, with Jed Fish, was doing there with Fafita and Delora. I'm fascinated by that. Jed, Jed Fish worked for Sean McVay with the LA Rams. When the Rams are on defense, Sean McVay was sitting with Jared Goff on the bench, right? He let the defense run the defense. <laughs> well, nice toss. That's a nice job there. Sanders took something off that throw. Oh, yeah, second window. He wanted to throw it initially. You see him kind of hold on to it, allow Hunter to get through the zone, pass Jacob Manu. Catchable ball. And we have a late flag down. An eligible yeah. receiver downfield. Offense, number 69, five yard penalty, third down. That's why it was a late flag. So that. Play we see a lot now in this RPO era run pass option of football when offensive linemen get caught past the three yards, you're allowed to go. Yeah, and that's going to make Coach Sanders frustrated. He said earlier this week he continually shows his team the six to 12 plays a game where they're drive killers, where you're hurting yourself. And he goes, we just got to get over that hump. That's an example of one of those plays that negatively affect your team. Third most penalized team in the conference, Colorado. Nice job by Sanders. Boy, just buying all kinds of time. And then a few yards after the catch by Xavier Weaver. 
And that's going to give Colorado at least a shot on third down. So much about pass protection for a quarterback is knowing where you're not protected. And Shador Sanders has a great understanding. Now he's got to recognize where pressure is coming from. I had imagined Johnny Nance is going to bring some heat here. Try to get the ball out of his hands. So you're saying Arizona uses a ton of defensive linemen. And uh, haven't gotten home as much. And there they don't get home. And Sanders takes the go round shot down the field. There's just some jostling that's let go on both sides between Weaver and Davis. Cario Davis, 6'4", buck 95. They want to be physical with the line of scrimmage, trying to mirror the release. You see the contact with both of them? I like, I like the officials allowing them to yes. play. Again, when you're calling a pass interference, you have to impede the receiver from getting the ball. No impeding there. That replay shows you why teams love big corners. <laughs> you ain't lying. Which started with Richard Sherman and an old beaver, Brandon Browner. Up the middle, flat. And so that may bring this return back. Celestine, who got banged earlier on the punt returns, hold his helmet like he got caught in a bad block. Yeah, he did. That was an easy one on the officials. Tough penalties. It's about a 25 yard switch in field position. Well, Noah Fafita got a little pep talk from his coach and his buddy quarterback and see if that sparks him. Back 12 football is presented by the LA Bowl. Tickets are now on sale for the LA Bowl hosted by Gronk at SoFi Stadium. Visit LABowlGame.com for more information. All right, at Folsom Field in Boulder. Colorado's defense has held up pretty well so far. About 19 minutes of football. Here's Arizona. At their own 29 almost. Coleman gets the car. No. Yeah, it is Coleman up the middle. Coleman at the 50. And gets angled. Not done yet. And Jonah Coleman, which is what he has done to take this job after Michael Wiley got hurt. Jonah Coleman barrels all the way down near the 10. Picks up an incredible block from Wendell Moy. And having a stiff arm on Shiloh Sanders. And he just keeps seeking contact. The balance, low center of gravity. That's how you flip the field with Jonah Coleman in the running game. Yeah, did step out of bounds there. So he's out of bounds back at the 23 of Colorado. Still a 49-yard run for Jonah Coleman. He took advantage of Michael Wiley, got banged up back in September at Stanford. Coleman's not letting go of the job. Quick for Fita to McMillan with blocking. And McMillan has run down from behind. Boy, that looked like that had end zone on it. And some good backtracking. Levanta Bentley on that play for the Buffs. How about the block right here? Jacob Cowing on true freshman Cormani McLean. And then McMillan just does the rest. He's such a dynamic athlete. Immediately knows how to get north and south, Ted, and that, that's what second-year players do. This guy's playing it at an all-everything level. He should be talked about for all the awards at wideout, and now he's matched up against Travis Hunter inside the 10. 39 catches last year for McMillan, 54 already this year. Going short side toss, DJ Williams, no! Trevor Woods. Some guys just have a nose for the ball. That's been Trevor Woods since he's been in Colorado. He could just sense where it's going. Not even touch. Josh Baker can't get the angle to him, the center. And he's been a big addition since he moved from safety. He's the communicator. He's allowed everybody around him to elevate their game. Arizona's been a good red zone team on offense this year. They've only had two empty trips. Cold in the back. McMillan and Lamonius Craig to the top. Looking at McMillan. Not there, not there. Back of the end zone almost picked. Travis Hunter 
And that's what everybody knows that now about Travis Hunter. He's literally a hunter. They say he hunts picks, and he saw that coming. And Arizona's lucky he doesn't pick this. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. Nova Vita needs to throw it right here off the bat. He needs to throw it to the top of the screen because Tetero McMillan was wide open. And Travis Hunter says, oh, you don't want to throw it to him? I see where your eyes are. He jumps right back in. Nice shot with the collision, knocking the ball away. That's why Colorado's been such a very, such a strong defensive team with takeaways, plus 11. Third and goal. Ooh, into the noise of the student section, a ball skimmed. Cameron Silman Craig got a piece of that, but we have the late flag down. Backward for Fita through the ball. Was it a late hit? Personal foul, rough in the passing. again that just crush it climb in the pocket and yeah it's not as though it's a punishing hit but it's enough it's it's easily laid yeah so what a break for Arizona first and goal at the three quick there for the touchdown Jacob Cowing well, that's a, honestly, that's a giveaway by Colorado. A needless yeah. penalty. Well, I love the design, Ted. They've run this a few times the last few weeks with Jacob Cowing in terms of the motion towards the sideline. Every time he's run continuously towards an out route towards the sideline, this time he puts the brakes on, gets the ball, north and south touchdown. Tyler Loop on the point, so Arizona takes advantage of that roughing the passer, and they tie the game. Well, it all started with this run, with this stiff arm from Jonah Coleman. Whew. Got him inside the 10. The penalty helps him out. Jacob Cowing on the short motion. We got a game here in Boulder. Now, what a perfect day for football. I almost felt like I wanted to apologize to Deion Sanders for forcing a man whose nickname is built on playing under the lights. <laughs> and we have to play this game at noon. I'm really sorry about that, Coach Sanders. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, what, The people are okay with it. You can see every seat's, every seat's filled. All right. Look at Yogi. Show us Travis Hunter. Oh, he's such an electric player. Look at his head, right? Right now, as a quarterback, you're seeing his eyes, and you're saying he's playing zone. At the snap, his eyes go right there towards number four, Tetrarogi Millen. So you're thinking it's man. Well, watch his eyes. They continue to peek back at Nova Vita. He's in zone coverage. So he drives on another zone, which is occupied by Jacob Cowing to make a play. And there are, there are very few, if any, players in America that can not only do that once, but he has done that time and time again. Every interception this season has been in zone coverage where he's manipulated yeah. the quarterback into thinking it's one coverage and then all of a sudden giving him the ball. It was great. It was really living up to his name as they try to run a first down and Arizona smothers that, but somebody may have grabbed a face mask. Let's see how that play comes as Hankerson got completely smothered. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 98, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, on the, on the flip side of the Colorado story, Arizona, Dion even talked about it this week, Arizona's been a low penalty team this year. Yeah, it's been a major point of emphasis for both of these programs. But both these teams today have had penalties that have really impacted the opponent's offensive drives. And Colorado out to their 40. Sanders drifts middle, got to get out. Manu got him out. Now he throws that ball ahead. It would think he's outside the tackle box. 
Not sure it got back to the line of scrimmage. I don't think the pass got back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they're talking about yep, it. There goes the flag. flag. Yep. He was outside the tackle box, but yep. not back to the line of scrimmage. And this is all Jacob Manu. Intentional grounding. Offense, number two. Penalty is a loss of down. Second down. Keep an eye on number five right here, your linebacker. It's going to be delayed blitz. His job is to spy the quarterback. See his eyes, his eyes. The minute he gets out of the pocket, he says, all right, I'm going. And he doesn't just tackle Shador Sanders, but he goes for the ball. Yeah. And that impacts Sanders. Yeah. And a clear call there. Ball did not get back to the line of scrimmage. And there was no receiver. Yeah. So pretty easy call there. And in essence, the, it serves as a sack. So it's second and 22. Coming back into the game right here is Travis Hunter. He's lined up against Traden Stukes in the slot. And Sanders launches one for Hunter. And that's going to be a flag. So the flag comes down against Traden Stukes. And that'll get Colorado a first down. It's a really nice acting job for Travis Hunter. Pass interference, defense, number two, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Watch him off the line of scrimmage, Ted. He's kind of just jogging, thinking it's a run play away, just kind of taking my time. But he's allowing the receiver to get in front of him to clear out some space against Stukes. Really nice job of executing that route and giving him a shot to get the P.I. Yeah, pretty clear, though. Again, the right arm hits yeah, him before. Yeah. So two major penalties against Arizona defensively, best mask and P.I. And a little game there on a run play. Mono on the tackle of Hankerson's run. Second down and six. So second down and six here for Colorado. The line they need to get is the 47 of Arizona. And Hankerson with the fight's going to get it. Nice job by Anthony Hankerson. Kept his balance and pushed himself forward to get a first down. You know, this old lineman has got a lot of criticism, but a nice job there of right guard, right tackle, get out in space. How about Hankerson in the balance? Protecting the ball as well. It's usually when you see turnovers happen. Yeah, Jacob Kangaika looked like he had him down, but Hankerson got out of it. Hankerson, the more uh, rare player on this Colorado team, he stayed here. Oh, and he runs into Jacob Mano, who's another guy that. In his second year of this outstanding class that Jed Fish brought in, manu has been the defensive standout. Yeah, he's such a smart player. That time you see the running back lined up a little bit behind Shador Sanders. You see that in the gun. You can anticipate run a little bit. manu has got great instincts. He anticipates run and beats the offensive lineman to the punch. But no gain on that first down play. No hurry up here for Colorado. Hunter motions to the slot bottom. Sanders started to look that way. Now it comes to the middle. He's got his man. First down inside. The 30 to Jimmy Horn. Arizona's bringing everybody here. Linebackers are waiting, trying to spy. Shador Sanders stands in the pocket so strong, there's nobody dropping in the middle of the field. It's an easy read. Nice job by Horn on the, on the dig route. 17-yard gain. And the ball now is at the Arizona 27. That was Arizona defense that has been such a part of their rise. Johnny Nansen, the they're allowing less than 20 points a game. Colorado's threatening to bust that right here in the first half. Yeah, they are. And Arizona's been mixing it up. 
look at the numbers. I mean, the growth is as good as good as we've seen in this league in a while in terms of what they were a year ago to now. But they've been playing a bunch of different fronts, Ted. We've seen them with three defensive linemen and Martell Irby playing inside linebacker. Now four D linemen are in, and they're in their traditional eight DB package. Sanders drifting back, drifting back, way back. Not going to get outside right. Comes back across the field and slipping was Dylan Edwards. Say, Shadur Sanders is terrific at, at extending plays, isn't he? Oh, man. Just buying time. He's got a great understanding of the protection. And I think that's the number one thing that a lot of quarterbacks struggle with because there's a lot of passers out there, Ted. And a lot of offenses just play catch. He, he's playing quarterback. He's done that his whole life. He's been trained to yeah. understand where guys align, what's coming. And I think when your old line has struggled, you've got to find the areas that are safe when you drop back. He's played Survivor Boulder quite a bit this year, and he's still on the island. So there's that three defensive lineman look. Basically, eight DBs prior to the timeout. All right, timeout taken by Colorado. Their first team timeout at 4.37 to go in the first half. Last home game we mentioned for the Buffs, they'll play in Pullman yeah. Friday night. Yeah. I would think that's awesome. Late November in Pullman on a Friday. Oh, it's great. Nobody's, nobody's asking for that on their schedule. And then uh, at Utah for their final game, Jed Fish goes home. Arizona will be home with Utah next Saturday. And eventually somebody will let these schools know when they can play. So there it is, been tracking it all day. They did a nice job in terms of outside of that first drive, only six pressures today. By contrast, 18 against UCLA a couple weeks ago, only one sack. There it is, three receiver bunch down to the very to the tight side of the field. Hunters in the middle of the three. And look, here's this 3D lineman look. Common sense would say you should be able to run the ball against this. Yeah. Wow, spread very wide. Sanders over the middle, has the man. 15, 10, Weaver to the pylon. Let's see. Touchdown. They bring a bunch of pressure. He throws it to where the pressure comes from. Easy read by him to Weaver. And he does the rest, trying to get over the top of that pylon. He does for a touchdown. It's a crossing route that Colorado has used all season long. Great execution against the pressure. I'd say I would wonder if they're going to look at this about the pylon. Yeah, it's oh. got to be the pylon extended. Yeah. And here it comes. Yeah, I'm not sure. Tough, tough call on the field in real time, and they're going to take a look at this. The previous play is under review. Yeah, Jerry Meyerhoff, a replay lead replay official here in Boulder. And it's interesting because they had the three receivers stacked to the bottom to the tight side of the field, but it's the guy that came from the big side. Yeah. Weaver that is the target, and <laughs> at least got the ball to the one yard line, if not in. Our Whole Foods Market official review coming. And I think to, to that point, Ted, when you bring pressure against Colorado, most teams have impacted Shador Sanders the last couple weeks. They've held up. He's retreated enough. And he found the open zone as we take another look at this. I don't, I don't know. Because the ball's I, in that outside arm. Maybe we don't have a, we obviously don't have the goal line cam, but I don't see that that's a touchdown. Personally, yeah. ball does not go anywhere near the pylon. And you hit it. If the ball is in the in the right arm, if the ball's in the right arm, yep. he might have been able to get the pylon, but he had it on his left. Out of bounds at the half yard yeah. line. Yeah. It'll be first and goal from the half yard line. I was, I was just talking to Jerry Maroff before the game about that, and that's a good thing. That's a quicker review because they have pretty clear view. Yeah. The ball didn't go anywhere near the pylon. Uh, so it will be first and goal inside the one. First and goal. 
here comes the big body personnel on the defensive line, and they are inches away from a touchdown. Does Colorado have a push play? Well, I was going to say, uh, you'd think quarterback sneak, but Shador Sanders has been banged up. At times, he's been limping a little today. Do they call that or try for just a quick handoff? Wilkerson is the running back. No, oh, and then Wilkerson's there to push him. And let's see what's the result of this rugby pile. Yeah, Shador tried to Shador tried to keep it, and then Wilkerson was going to put a little heft behind him. And again, the difficulty for the officials is it's just massive bodies. You can't see the ball. When you're teaching your D lineman here for Arizona, they call it kind of the submarine technique. Yeah. Just get as low as possible. Try to take out the legs of the offensive lineman, and can they push back the front? And for Colorado here, it's a challenging call because you're you're so close. I mean, you're you're an inch and a half away from a touchdown. She got to touch the white on the goal line there. But do you want some misdirection run here as they end up in the gun? Different personnel, so Arizona changed. And from the gun, Wilkerson runs it in for the Colorado score. And I'll tell you, if that isn't a, a little small window into how football has changed. Inside the one, you line up under center, and can't score, go to the shotgun, looks easy. <laughs> yeah, why not? Oh, and Arizona had their chance. Dion says, yeah, touchdown, let's go for one. As we see a late flag on the field, too. Sanders did. That's number two's first unsportsmanlike of the game. Did or did or said something that gets in the penalty. And the end. The, 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 well, the last word there from Craven Barrett's important. So you only get two in a game, you're out. Yep. So he's got to be. Shadur's got to be on his best behavior. And Colorado, three first half touchdowns. Sun-kissed day in the Rocky Mountains. When you talk to Deion Sanders, it's fun to hear him reflect on his career. And he said, look, when I played football, I was prime. When I played baseball, I was Deion. And both of his sons reflect a different one of those. Shiloh is more of prime, the talker, a little bit more exotic as a player. And Shador is Deion. Just calm, steady, which made that penalty we saw the personal foul on Sportsmanlike. A little uncommon for Shador Sanders. Yeah. It was interesting because we haven't called Shiloh's name yet today. And Jed Fish singled him out. We're talking about the Colorado team. Sh you know, Shiloh's been one of the best tacklers in the conference. And Jed Fish talked about him being just an excellent football player. All right, kickoff after the penalty comes from the 20. Speedy Luke will get to the 35 and about to the 40, so that'll give Arizona real good position. Plenty of time here. Three minutes, one timeout left for Arizona, and you can see a Fafita with an uncharacteristic half so far, six of 14. Can yeah. he he's can he engineer a good drive? Yeah, you're, you nailed it. He's missed some easy completions, Ted. And I think if I'm Colorado, I'm coming after Jed Fish's quarterback again, and I think the pressure's up the middle have impacted a little bit his accuracy. Another place Arizona hasn't gone yet is to Tanner McLaughlin, who's been a big part of their offense this year, the tight end. Out in the pattern here, Fafita taking the deep shot for McMillan, and Hunter on his back. Wow, the Arizona side saw Hunter look like he had a fistful of McMillan's jersey from behind. The official was in front, may not have seen this. That's a great call. Oh, right there. Yeah. He's grabbing his jersey. Yeah. I mean, that, that to me is the impeding that we haven't seen on previous balls down yeah. the field. Arizona's accurate in their argument. Yeah, Should have been a PI. Saw it sideline, could see that. Again, the official was in front of the play, could yep. not see from behind. It is second and ten. 
Throw to Cowling, and that's a first down into Colorado territory. Flags are down at the end of the play again. Let's see, did Fafita did Fafita get hit at all? Yeah, he got hit right as right as after yeah. he threw it. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense, number 49. 15-yard penalty would be added to the end of the run. Wow, it'll be a 20. Yeah, you'll see it right there, 49. Watch his hands at the end. Oh, yeah. Again, easy call. Easy call, and he completes this one. He's missed this a little bit today. They love that little inside clear route and a slant, and that's frustrating because that's now the third unforced error on Colorado that's positively impacted Arizona on offense. That 13 yard play plus 15 yards, so a 28 yard move. And a first down. Fafita goes sideline incomplete. That's the first target to Tanner McLaughlin. So much of what Jed Fish has done with offense, it's been so much of the underneath throws, the short game that Fafita again has shined at. Jacob Cowing's averaging only seven and a half yards a catch this year. It's worked for them, but not so far today. And they love putting him on the same side as T Mac at the top of the screen. Coleman running. Oh, I mean, what tackle to get past. He might have made something, but Levanta Bentley didn't let go. Bentley's been playing his best football, and I think it's because of Trevor Woods coming in and playing linebacker. Watch his tackle here from number 20. He's going to drive on it, gets past that big right arm of Jonah Savanaya. And again, this effort of this Colorado defense has showed up. They need to show up on a third down. So empty backfield on third and 10. Well, now change Fafita brings Jonah Coleman back. Pressure coming, screen to Coleman inside, but it's broken up. McNeil broke off his rush. Amari McNeil disrupted the play. So now you're going to have Arizona with a long fourth down. They're going to try the 50-plus field goal. To me, this is a big assist to Charles Kelly. He won that battle against Jed Fish. You're thinking pressure. You're thinking screen's the perfect call against pressure. They show it, don't bring it, and make a play on the screen. All right, Colorado called a timeout here. That's why we're stopped. Colorado, their second timeout of the half. Yeah, that's Please set the game clock to 137. I like that. That's a good timeout between Thank you. Deion Sanders, Pat Shermer, a lot of people with uh, pro experience there understanding, I want the ball back with time, say 40 seconds. Now we'll go down uh, to the field, the corner in Folsom Field for our halftime report presented by Bear with Ashley Adamson, Shane Vereen, and Nick Aliotti, our executive producer, the professor, Bob Schmelzley. Aliotti was down on the field. He did 67 laps of Folsom Field before the game, soaking up knowledge. <laughs> 52 yards here for Luke. Plenty of leg, plenty good. That'd be good from 60, if not further. And again, at 52-80, you understand that as good as many strong-legged kickers as we see today, this is when the kickers love being high in the Rockies. Perfect hold. God, he's so talented. Got such a leg, and now this is going to be a challenge because this is the middle eight and. Arizona does get the ball to kick off in the second half. So this is a critical drive for them to keep some momentum going. And I'll be curious what Johnny Nansen does. Because remember, Colorado was built on tempo. Remember that TCU game? It seems like it was eons ago. They were running. It felt like a million miles an hour. They have that in their arsenal. This is how they practiced pretty much up until about three weeks ago. So here they go with the buck 32 left. Temple will not be a problem. Time will not be an issue for this offense of the Buffs. That was a career best field goal, by the way. 52, and I, I, that would have been good. I'd be maybe wrong. That would have been good. 62, 64. Man, that was a terrific kick by Lou. Uh, the 
Chris Whitehill just hit for the touchback, but plenty of time here for the Buffs. 92 seconds with one timeout. So the biggest thing right now, as you've watched Arizona in this first half, Ted, is they've played a lot of three down linemen looks and keeping Martell Irby in as an inside linebacker along with Jacob Manu. First drive, they were able to get home. They have not really affected Shador Sanders outside of one blitz from Jacob Manu. So now they come out, and it's a four defensive lineman personnel grouping. And because of the tempo, this might be the group you'll have to be on the field with through the entirety of this drive. Only one sack in the first half for Arizona. Running play there will allow Flo around, slamming him down as Isaiah Ward. No body weight, though, so no flag. Dylan Edwards takes the brunt of it. And here comes the clock management, right? If you're wondering why isn't Colorado going faster, they're saying we don't want to give the ball back. So here on this second down, allowing the play clock to wind a little bit. Good throw, first down, and that's Harrison, Michael Harrison. Been involved, that's his 20, ooh, that one hurts, 28th catch of the year. Martell Irby. Down at the end of the play. Former running back at UCLA. There he is, 13. Watch him drive on this. Immediately oh. clutch the left knee. He's got one of the better stories we've heard of in recent years. This is a guy who walked away from football at UCLA. Johnny Nansen was on the UCLA staff when he was there. He was out of football for a year. He felt as though, hey, i got to come back and play. Called up Coach Nansen. He said, yeah, you can come walk on. Not only did he walk on, but he drove Uber. He found a job anywhere that he could. Showed up for workouts. And as the season got going, Jed Fish rewarded him with a scholarship. He's a captain for this team and hope that he can return to this game and that injury is not very serious. Yeah. Boy, Johnny Nansen is... Uh, this defense, we saw it. Kind of, I guess maybe the game in Pullman was the one where you really saw it take over. And uh, what a turnaround for Arizona football. Again, six wins and counting. So, 53 seconds, first down for Colorado. Shot, Hunter, he's out there. Hunter has it, and Colorado's in business. Again, he just ran right by Prysock. Wins on his release, Prysock moves inside too much, and this time, number seven never looks back. Never looks back to see the ball. Travis Hunter's tracking it the whole time. Oh, Sanders pulls it down. Flag. So that is going to be a holding flag. And he and got that. hit by Haimuli at the end. I not have the quarterback in a passing puck. Good, trying to find out if we have a, a grounding flag on top of a holding flag. The Arizona coaches out there trying to get their defenders away. Holding offense, number 69, 10-yard penalty, first down. And Jed Fish was trying, his staff were doing a great job trying to keep their defenders out of getting any late flags. You see the hole right there. Well, a late hit from wow. Hamuli, who well, came in for Irby. That's a low hit, too. Yeah, you're exactly right. That's, I understand the Colorado side being upset because that's. And you heard the official as Mike flag. was on. He said, yeah. was he outside the pocket? Yeah. Basically meaning, is he a live runner? Yeah, that's. And they said he was not in the passing pocket, so that may be why there was no flag. And so oh, tipped and incomplete. Is it? A quarterback protection, the low hit now is protected as much as the high hit. All right, so 22 seconds left. You're in field goal range. You got two kickers, remember, at Colorado, pending which way 
Deion Sanders wants to go here. And to me right now, you're trying to get some positive yardage with one timeout. Field goal kicking game hasn't been a certainty for Colorado. That's another factor here. They got the Buffs have a timeout so they could use the field. Ooh, Sanders has to get rid of it incomplete. Hunter was running down the far side. That's where Sanders was looking. Hunter and Weaver both on the far side. And watch Travis Hunter here. He's going to end up motioning over here, runs an out route, and he's open. Sherson is trying to throw it there, but what happens? The tackle gets pushed back right into his lap. Can never really get a clear picture of it. Forces him here in the third down. So third down, and if nothing else, they want to get some yardage here. Just give him a better field goal try. And again, they can use the whole field. Oh! Getting through. Spinning around. No face mask. Sanders still going. Still going. And he's going to get out of bounds. Finally shoved out by Prysock. What a job by Shadur Sanders to save t about 20 yards of potential loss and give Colorado a field goal try. Oh, this is so impressive. I mean, he has just willed his team all season long. The pressure almost taken down once, almost taken down twice. He knows the situation, he knows the clock is winding, takes a peek at it, basically gets back to the original line of scrimmage. So Alejandro Mata, the try from 39 here, left hash. Timeout, Arizona, their last of the half. Arizona will take a timeout. What a crazy sequence, a series of plays here to end the half. And how many quarterbacks this season have we seen do something like that? Right. Caleb, Bo Nix, yeah. I mean, it happens. It's such a challenge for these defensive linemen, these big bodies. I would love to know in, in today's uh, world where they can track this, how many miles has Shadur Sanders run in the first half? <laughs> yeah, that's right, that GPS. Well, the D-line for Arizona, this is their best drive of the game since the first drive. Almost get him once, almost get him twice. And I just love how he kind of peeks at the clock. He knows the situation here. You can't keep running around. Only four ticks left. You've had Colorado fans wondering one no late hit on Sanders. And on that play, Uyunglele, it looked like he might have grabbed the face mask. But that's we didn't have a great view. No flag on the field. Mata. Mata. Low trajectory kicker. Let's see. From 39. Wow, he got that through. Man, he does. His his ball does not get up. But he got through. And Colorado tacks on three before halftime. So go back to Deion Sanders taking a timeout before Arizona's field goal. Good play. Ashley. Coach, I know offensive line play was a big thing coming in. What did you see from that group? Well, we're doing a better job of protecting Shadow. We're actually running the football occasionally, but we're effective. Defensively, we got to stop the explosions. This is one of the first few times that the offense, defense, as well as special teams are showing up. We just got to be consistent. I don't know what we're going to say in the locker room, but we got to come up with something because when we come out the second half, we got to really want this a lot more than they do. Coach, thank you. God bless you. Before the cold and All right, Deion Sanders taking it back, and I, I thought that was a telling comment. First time all three teams have been together in a while for them. So it is Colorado 24, Arizona 17. Entertaining first half. And we'll check in with Ashley and team for the halftime report presented by Bear on the other side. All right, Carvana first half stats, and uh, Wow, the offensive numbers pretty much tilt, except for yards per rush, tilt to Colorado, Yogi. Yeah, they did a nice job outside of the first and last drive of the first half of protecting Shador Sanders. He's finding ways to get away from that pass rush, and he has stepped up when he's felt the pass rush. How about this? It comes in a bunch of different ways, a bunch of different layers. Nothing going downfield. Tucks it, runs, shows his athleticism, even though he seems a little banged up for their first score. Then I love this one. Catching the Arizona defense, communicating. Got a step out of Jimmy Horn Jr. for a touchdown perfectly placed. And then how about Travis Hunter? Look at this. Is it man? Is it zone? He's got such a great feel, Ted. His eyes are always watching Nova Vita. Stops. A big-time opportunity for Arizona. 
And then Colorado uses a timeout, leads to an explosive play down the field, which leads to three points before the half. And right, we heard from Dion what he thinks about Colorado. What do you think Arizona's must is in the second half? Well, I think they're going to change up their defense a little bit because just having three defensive linemen, they're not getting home for the majority yeah. of that first half. See if they bring in Justin Flo. Do they bring in Jeremy Mercer? Do they try to get a little bit bigger, a little bit more physical getting into the backfield of Shador Sanders? Then offensively, look, Noah Fafita, he seemed off. He seemed a little hesitant. We haven't seen that since he's become the starter at Arizona. He's got to cut it loose here in the second half. All right, Arizona gets the ball after deferring, winning the opening toss. And they'll start with the touchback. And again, Noah Fafita has been a terrific percentage thrower, not in the first half, eight for 18. Yeah, look, he wants to go to Tetero McMillan, and at times Travis Hunter is lined up over him. And I do think the play we showed earlier where he's utilizing his eyes and trying to manipulate Nova Fafita into making him think, is it man, is it zone? He got him twice in the first half. I think for Nova Fafita right now, he's got to trust his eyes, rip through his progression to get the ball out. They had 11 targets in the first half between McMillan and Cowan on only four completions out of 11 targets. That's very unlike Arizona. Fafita, a 76% passer coming in. And Arizona not done a ton on the ground. Jonah Coleman had one big 49-yard run. Beyond that, not a lot. And the defensive line of Colorado has been challenged this week to play more physical. I think they have done a nice job for the majority of that first half. Speedy Lucas split wide to the bottom and a two receiver bunch Fafita guns one whoa is that a catch yes man Travis Hunter again that, the, the word they used about him was hunting interceptions he was hunting one here yeah how about the whoa. route coming back I mean this match has been so fun to watch Tetero McMillan He's got such a bright future. He's been so gifted since he showed up on campus. The biggest recruit in a long time in Arizona. And we know what Travis Hunter is. He keeps making plays. They're lined up against each other again. So it's third and one. And the Colorado students roaring, cowing, looping, running it inside. Big game. Big game, Coleman. Foot race. And angled down by Travis Hunter to keep Coleman from getting home. His patience is so good, Ted. He's allowing the blocks to occur right here on the left side of the offensive line. Wait, wait, patient, boom. And then just follows Raymond Polito, the true freshman, gets his body between the back and the defender. Short Coleman showcasing some of that burst. 54 for Coleman, so he's had two huge runs. And this one puts Arizona at the Colorado 12. DJ Williams now the back. Run it again. Nice cutback. He's close. Going to be marked down near the one. It's a nice job of Noah Fafita recognizing. Look at all these defenders. All their eyes are on those receivers. He says, OK, no problem. Hand it off. Get inside the five. And it's going to go fast here. First and goal. And A oh, nice, really nice answer for Arizona. And the Servite High connection works. McMillan won it. We shouldn't be surprised anymore. We shouldn't be. Yeesh. What a drive. Well, one run did it. <laughs> and thankfully for Arizona, finished in the red zone, and Tyler Luke ties the game. Wow. Well, this duo grew up together. They are constantly on the same page. This drive, they begin it with a catch, and they end it with a catch. How about that? One-handed. Everybody standing up. <laughs> well, they've tried Fafita and McMillan, and here they go. How about the location of the ball?
I mean, high and outside. <laughs> you said it, Ted. He's getting accustomed to these one-handed yeah. grabs and get accustomed to this celebration from Southern Californian High School to Tucson. They came on a mission to Arizona, and they have helped this thing turn yeah. around in a big way. You know, one of the reasons you say we're not surprised is receivers work on this now yeah. all the time. You, know, you watch them in practices, workouts. They work on that. They're not just improv that skill. Touchback here. Let's get an update now in our studio with Mark Willard. All right, guys, this update brought to you by 76. Let's check in on Washington. Michael Penix Jr. from two yards out in the first quarter, giving UW the lead, but a very quick answer for Utah. Jaquindon Jackson says, I got you two yards right here. And we are tied up at seven in the first quarter in Seattle. Ted, Yogi, back to you. Wow. Well, it's funny. I never sleep on Utah, no matter what the uh, odds may say or think. Offside. Not a chance. Five-yard penalty. First down. All right. So Arizona offsides on the touchback kick, which they just tack on. So Colorado starts from the 30. Never see that call. And see how it impacts this drive. Gonna swing it out. And stumbling again. That's the second time Dylan Edwards has lost his footing. He, if you look carefully as we watch the second half, you can see the field's chewed up. And it's November. It's already been snow in the Rockies. And uh, they, it's green. I give credit. They keep it green, but it's pretty chewed up. Yeah, and the biggest thing for receivers is making sure you stay over your toes when you're breaking on your routes and the field's heating up like that. Colorado trying to run it. Dylan Edwards is going to be stopped short of the line to game. And Bill Norton. Bill Norton's been active. Been a nice ad for Arizona this year in that defensive line. Yeah, I mean, I, I just think the overall philosophy of Jed Fisher, how he's built this program through high school, supplementing and recruiting. Don't know what that. Announcement was Brennan Carroll there consulting with Jed Fish. Colorado did have a sixth offensive lineman out on that play. They'll remove here, and that'll give Arizona a chance to sub. Four rush, Sanders again retreating, retreating. Into the middle and right at the line. Boy, nice job by Dylan Edwards. He ran that run at the line to gain. First down. It's a really nice job just buying time. Shador Sanders feeling pressure from Taylor Upshaw. To your point, Edwards knowing where the sticks are. Sanders to the middle of the field. No, not held. Low there with Jimmy Horn. Take a look at the previous play where they converted for a first down. Here comes pressure off the edge. And watch Shador Sanders just feel it. And subtly move, subtly move. No hold on the O line. He's got just such a great feel in the pocket, Ted. Sanders now 15 of 23, 198. He's had a, at least two drops. And a run. And again, Arizona a little bit there for Colorado, but not much. Deion Sanders' words as he left the field for first At least we're trying to run. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's well, about think, the best they've been able to do. Yeah, and look, that's the idea of complementary football. And we've seen Arizona, Martel Irby hadn't been on the field at all to start this second half. It is, it's amazing. What Saturday football's become. I mean, the Arizona's changing four or five defensive people on every down yeah. if they're allowed to. Yeah, now you're seeing DJ Warnell at safety at the top of the screen. And Colorado has third and eight. And Sanders has the middle open. He has no. Got wrapped up high by Isaiah Ward and flung down short. He's a yard short right at the 50. 
Yeah, a nice tackle by him, and I'd imagine this is four down territory. Sure, Sanders knows where the sticks are. He's trying to dive to get it, and Ward out of nowhere grabs him. And it looks like Deion Sanders is going to elect the punt. And uh, we have 50,000 or so Folsom Field casting their vote in the voice. <laughs> Unanimous in their call. Go for it. Right now, the punt team out there. Arizona has to be very wary, but they do snap it. Bassett punts it. Cowling will let it hit, and it will go out of bounds inside the five. At the two. Second terrific punt by Bassett. 48 on the money. Seesaw on the far right. Speaking for all. It's a couple of proud moms there in the Arizona section. Fafita has got time coming out of the end zone. Oh, wow. That was, that started out looking dangerous, but he airmailed it. Otherwise, Travis Hunter had an easy six. Yeah, and to me right there for Noah Fafita, you got to stay with your progression. He had cowing underneath and went for the big shot. And I love being aggressive against Travis Hunter, but. There is a borderline. You don't want to be late to his side of the field. We did have a uh, Jacob Manu's mom was there. Tedero McMillan's mom sitting in that group. All right, Arizona with their quick snap. And they've got an open man out to the 20 is Lavonius Craig. You'll see Arizona employ that every so often. Sprint out of the huddle, snap it quick. And it works for 19. Does it ever? And how often we see under center play action pass? I mean, it's a thing of the past in college football. You could see it clear as day where he's going to go with the ball. Nice job finding a slot receiver. All right, not much there on the first down run for Arizona. You know, Jet Fish always has such a great feel for quarterbacks. He's done it through the entirety of his coaching career. And I'd imagine he talked to Noah Fafita at halftime and said, all right, we're going to find you a little bit of rhythm here. And you see him now that there is a rhythm to his game. That first drive coming out, even this drive after that first play, it's one, two, ball out. Ooh, high throw. Flags down, incomplete pass eventually. McLaughlin did get his hands on it. Field judge threw the flag deep in the secondary. Well, they chat this out. We should also mention Arizona men's basketball had a huge win last night at Duke. And unsportsmanlike conduct, offense, sideline interference. The official ran into the coach. That is a live ball foul, treated as a dead ball foul. Third down. Wow, live ball foul and sideline interference. We saw it called last week in our game as well. Then Eugene. And that puts Arizona in a bad spot. Back to the 11-yard line, third and 20. And they are right in front of that student section here at Colorado. Jed Fish was just talking to the field judge to make sure he understood why it was called. They've backed everybody up on the Arizona side, running Coleman. Nope, trying to get outside and that'll let Pursuit run him down. So Arden Walker there, Jake Milliner Jones there. So anyway, it's going to be another damaging penalty and it leads to fourth down. So we were going to say that Arizona men's basketball had a big win last night and Colorado's women's team on Monday night beats the number one team in the nation, the defending national champs LSU. Colorado has a whole lot to cheer about in there athletically in their dozen years in the conference, but J.R. Payne getting the women's program into a great place. 
Tad Boyle has done that with the men. Here's Weaver. And again, the special team's field position has gone to Colorado. Arizona's been stuck deep in their territory, and they've not covered the punts well. That's a 43-yard punt and a 22-yard return by Xavier Weaver. And you heard Jed Fish after the first quarter talk to Ashley Adamson about it. We just can't continue to give them short fields. And look, any penalty is frustrating, but when you get one like they did as a sideline infraction, saying to yourself, oh, just crushed our momentum after a touchdown on that first drive. And now here's Colorado inside the 40. So remember, Mark Vassett of Colorado has had two great punts. He pinned Arizona at the two. And this exchange of punts ends up with Shadur Sanders will start at the 35 of Arizona. So it'll be interesting to watch. Not sure what's going on here. Not, uh, not very smooth administration. I don't know why we're stopped. I'm not sure why they've stopped playing. The thing I'm looking for now, if I'm Colorado's offensive coordinator, Pat Shermer, is like, what personnel grouping is Arizona going to deploy? We've seen them play multiple players in the second half that have not played in recent weeks on their defense. Swift, so, so can you put them in a bind in some of that run-pass option game, find some of those intermediate routes against the linebackers? See number 18 in right now, Kaumela Kaihue, a freshman linebacker. Here comes Jeremy Mercer, number 44. He's an edge outside linebacker. So here come the Buffs at the Arizona 35. Great opportunity to regain the lead. Sanders stops in between the hashes. Now to the right hash. Fires to the sideline. Nope, out of bounds. And a flag down as well. We're trying to see, did a line? I don't see any linemen down the field. I don't know if anybody snuck down. We'll see. Illegal formation, oh. offense, more than four players in the backfield. Five yard penalty, okay. first down. Self inflicted. Extra offensive lineman on that previous snap. Yeah, there it is. There's oh, yes, 91 there. was a backup center, Hank Zelinskis. Wow. Yeah. True freshman. Yep. That's a good catch. So first and 15. And they get the penalty back plus a few. That is Hunter's fifth catch. I know it's pretty like old hat for Travis Hunter, but he's played every snap. Outside of one on defense and six on offense the whole game so far. It's amazing to watch him compete at such a high level. Oh, Arizona's held the edge there nicely. Denver let Dylan, yeah, it was Dylan Edwards trying to get that one cut. You know, find a lane, never did. Tell you what, keep an eye on Jeremy Mercer. You look at some of the snaps there for Travis Hunter. I mean, they knew that if they're going to get this win and get back the momentum they had early in the season, they're going to have to ride number 12. And, and they have 81 snaps, and we're about six minutes left in the third. All right, so third down here for Colorado. Third down for Colorado. Third and seven. To keep an eye right here. That's Justin Flo. This is his first action on defense today. And Sanders to the end zone. It is caught. No, not in bounds by Weaver. And again, everybody looking to see if yellow is going to flow as Weaver and Takario Davis were battling. And there was a battle indeed. A pull there by Davis on the jersey right near the collar. Run with them, run with them. There's a little bit of a pull there. We've seen that get called, Ted. Not called there. Yeah, and he's saying, come on, man. And we've seen it be not called. Fair. A couple of times. In this game. Yeah, in this game. So it is fourth down. Fourth and seven. Oh, 
Only three rush. So Sanders, he tried to spy him, he got away from it. Well, Justin Flo was supposed to be spying him and didn't. Yeah, he gets caught behind his own teammate as he's spying the quarterback. There he is, watch. That's one linebacker. There's Flo, spy, spy, spy. He gets caught by his own guy, Bill Norton. Shador sets it up, no problem. Finds his way, and man, Shador Sanders is battling. There's no way he's at 100%. Well, a lot of conversation early in the year by Justin Flo, but he's not playing very much near the end of the year. Uh, now Sanders will go down, so that'll be just the second sack for Arizona today. But what an escape by Sanders on that third down play, because that would have been a pretty dicey field goal. Yeah. Oh, no, excuse me, it was fourth down. No, it wouldn't have been a field goal. Yeah. It would have been a turnover. Well, I, it was... It was, you know, it was intriguing for them to decide to go for it. We've seen them at times do either. And they're saying, nope, we've had success in the punt game, but it was in that kind of fringe area. Allowed them to get another set of downs. But I think Shador Sanders, you see him limping a little bit, Ted, on that sack on the previous snap. He just kind of fell down instead of trying to fight his way out of it and saying, let me just live for another day. Swing to Edwards, but he's... Pinned along the sideline, Manu finally makes the hit to get him out of bounds. See Martel Irby there slapping him. Martel Irby is on the sideline, but he has no helmet. He's walking with a limp himself, so no helmet means he's not coming back. And it's third down and long for Colorado. There's Irby fixing the headband. Four rush. Middle throw. Sanders has his man. Flagged down at the end. It's short of the line to gain to Antonio. It might, it might be roughing there, too. Did they hit Shadur? He popped up, and they were. He got hit, and then there was some dialogue between the two. This is going to be an interesting call. Now, let's see. Conversations. Personal foul, rough in a passive, defense, number 11. After this is to the goal, first down. Taylor Upshaw amongst the conference leaders in sacks, trying to get one, but hit Sanders late. Let's see right at the top. Yeah, that's an easy call. And look, there's no mistake, this is a passionate game, and Upshaw was here within this program last spring, along with Shador Sanders. Look at the reversal by Horn. And wide open is Harrison for the Colorado touchdown. Watch your tight end, 87. You'll see it happen. It'll end up right there. He's going to start on this side with the motion. He sneaks all the way across the other side, and there he is wide open. What a play. The delay from the tight end, Pat Shermer. That was impressive. Second touchdown pass for Sanders, flagged down on the kick. Obviously, penalties against Arizona because they're asking Deion Sanders. Takes a long time to get this stuff done. Illegal formation, defense, lining up over the snapper. Yeah. That's a, that penalty is applied. Score is good. They're giving Deion the option to move it closer and go for two. So 31 24 now, Colorado. 
emotion, a lot of window dressing, but Michael Harrison goes from one side of the field at tight end, acts like he's blocking, slips to the other. Shador Sanders sells it incredibly wide open. Pops, son, that's the way to compete. We got a game here. Welcome back, and when you study Shador Sanders, a few things stand out. Number one, you can't help but talk about how he enjoys the big stage. All the moments this year, they put the ball in his hands. He has met them. His arm talent anticipation has been on stage since he got to Colorado and his toughness. I mean, it has, it has shown up time and time again. The last three games for this team, he has taken his fair share of hits, hurries, sacks, and he just keeps popping up. Speaking of taking some hits, here's something from today. It's been a physical game, Arizona, much like Oregon State and UCLA, trying to get after the quarterback, pressure the quarterback, impact the offensive line. But only two sacks, been hurried 10 times, hit twice. You see the numbers right there. Got to give this offensive line and the scheme some credits. It has not been what it's been the last couple weeks. Arizona, Noah Fafita, they went head-to-head -head with USC at the Coliseum, losing a three-overtime game in that kind of game here as Hunter breaks up the pass for McMillan. Flat. He's going to get a P.I. He holds his jersey. Crowd doesn't like it, but when you watch it back, you'll see it, and the matchup's great. It's a man-to-man -man competing down, all the way down the field. Ted, I got a feeling we're going to see a lot of this in the last 18 minutes of this ball game. Pass interference, defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic, first down. Man to man, you'll see it at the top. When a Tetra McMillan, number four, breaks down, one, he's walking back to the ball, and there's the tug on the jersey, not allowing him to work back on the ball right in front of the official. Easy call. Nine penalties now against Colorado, seven against Arizona. Oh no! That play was snuffed out right away by Jordan Dominic. Big loss, minus four. His hands are so impressive, he just gets off the block. He and Amari McNeil have easily been the two most productive defensive linemen for the Buffs, both making plays today. Yeah, uh, Dominic had a big game at UCLA two weeks ago, nine tackles. Loss of three, actually, second and 13. So Arizona behind the stick, so to speak. Ball caught. What a catch by McMillan. Knowing he was going to get popped, and he holds it for a first inside the 40. How about the anticipation? McMillan runs right through the zones, right over Trevor Woods, right in front of the safety ward. That's a tough ball to throw. Get the ball up and down is the phrase. Up over the linebacker. Get it down in front of the safety. You know you're going to take a hit. you got to climb up and make the grab. Big time by McMillan. Roderick Ward with the stick gain of 27 on the play. Deep drop, very deep. Now the man is there. Who else? Inside the 20. Hunter limping a little, limping a little bit. How about the release against the nickel defender at the top? He breaks off. Silman Craig slips. Fafita sees it the whole way. So much Ted in man to man is at the top. You've got to try to square up the DB's hips and then break it off. Back to back, 27 and 19 to McMillan. And now Arizona at the Colorado 18. And Joe Williams drives through, gets about three. Arden Walker 
Hit him first. Red zone offense was the number one point of emphasis for Arizona when they started their offseason program. Here they sit on the 15. So McMillan all the way to the top. Cowing in the slot to the top. Profita Cowing at the five. Close to the five. But that'll be first to goal. It's such a tough spot for Cameron Silman Craig. Number seven lined up right over the top. Driving on the route, but Cowing's already got inside position, Ted, just based on his initial leverage. He's inside of the DB. He's already got an advantage on an inside breaking route. Perfectly thrown. Nice job using his body on the catch for the first down. Third catch today for Cowing. He has 71 on the year. Coleman deep. Nope, didn't get it going. The quarter ran out. So end of the third quarter. Yeah, the CU students. Yeah, that's nice. Thank you for sharing that. That will not go on the school's recruiting brochure. Back to football is presented by 76. We're on the driver's side. By Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve. And by Applebee's, all veterans and active duty military eat free at Applebee's this Veterans Day, Saturday, November 11th. Now it's wonderful on the Pac-12 network to be in Boulder today. And here we go, fourth quarter. Colorado the lead, Arizona seven yards away from potentially tied. McMillan and Cowing both to the left of the formation. Boy, Fafita stumbled. No stumble by DJ Williams. He's in for the touchdown. The stumble from Fafita, but how about the patience of the back to, to not rush his path and then picks up a block from number five, Montana Lamonius Craig, and does the rest himself. I mean, that, that's impressive that most backs run right through that. Hey, so Fafita got stepped on as he's pulling away from center. And thankfully for Arizona, he didn't fall. And Tyler Loop ties the game with just a few ticks under 15 to play. I'll tell you what, this environment is off the hook right now. A little stumble, but not a stumble on the finish. All right, Mark, a lot of people watching that one. To see if Washington can hang in there, keep their squeeze alive to get into the top four. Kick here is going to be a, a touchback. So, Yogi, this is fascinating. I, so now here we go with a quarter to go. What, what do you see? What's a potential turning point? Well, quarter? I think it's on the defenses. You know, somebody's got to get a stop. So do you show a different wrinkle? Do you show a different coverage on a critical down? Because right now we've seen both teams kind of march up and down the field on one yeah. another. I, I don't anticipate either quarterback turning the ball over. I think it's just about which defense can rise up. It, it reminds me a little bit of a week ago in the fourth quarter, SCU Dub. U Dub gets a stop and all of a sudden can go up two scores. I'd imagine that's how this thing is going to play out here in the final 14-55. You mentioned a good point. There have been no turnovers in this game. None. And Arizona, Fafita has been excellent at that. Colorado's been a turn, a takeaway machine. Not today. In fact, the one, there should have been one turnover. Weaver was stripped to the ball on a punt return in the first quarter, but the ball bounced right to the hands of a Colorado player. And you know what else is going to be interesting, Ted, with the spying of Shador Sanders? How often do you want to do it? Because you're basically taking a defender out of a potential pass rush here with that three-down lineman look for Arizona. So nine yards to Weaver, second and one. And a first down run for Wilkerson. Here. 
This is early. A really good punch by Norton, and look at that. Fortunate bounce. <laughs> the way the ball bounces, right? I mean, that's the yeah. beauty of this one. As is that, seeing these students fired up. <laughs> oh, and there's the sack. So Arizona, pure pressure going way back early in the game. And they get finally to Shadur Sanders. Yeah, and this is DJ Warnell. He's coming in because Martel Irby came out. He, Jacob Manu, and company all find their way. Smothered. Smothered. Absolutely nothing well, doing. Even Sterling Lane finding his way in there. Haven't seen him a lot yeah. this, this season. The other part of this, Yogi, is that Shadur Sanders has been a brilliant fourth quarter player this year. Yeah. Colorado's oh, yeah. been an excellent fourth quarter team. Now they have to dig out of second, I believe, at 25. Sometimes there's one mistake. False start. Offense, number 55. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Well, Colorado's done this all year. They've made things way more difficult on themselves. And this is something that... Deion Sanders has referenced many times in the media, talked to us about it yesterday. Man, there's just six to 12 plays every game where we're so close, but we hurt ourselves. All right, let's see if they get some yards back on second down, and they do on a nice diving catch, at least ruled that way on the field by Caleb Mathis. See the end of the catch And here. that ruling, now the ruling is incomplete on the field after a conversation. And uh, wonder if this will be looked at. Everything's a conference now. <laughs> we have conferences. And... Oh. So third down and 25. <laughs> Over the middle and just a nice play. That's Gunnar Maldonado right there. Catch made, but nothing more. Yeah, Shador Sanders directing traffic to his check down. And I'll tell you what, Arizona's done a nice job. Not a lot of missed tackles for this team at 15 against SC, but ever since then, been in single digits. Johnny Nansen fired up. Well, let's see. This has not been uh, Colorado's won the special teams battle through three quarters. Let's see if Arizona can. Jacob Cowie can make something happen on this punt return. Bassett, youngster, he's only 24. Don't know how he got here so early. And Cowie gets it out across the 30. Oh, Cowie's down at the end. Yeah, that's potentially tough for Arizona. says, hey, I got you. I am him. Huge hole for the Arizona touchdown. Beautiful throw. In the only location possible. McMillan, one hand. What? Wide open is Harrison for the Colorado touchdown. No stumble by DJ Williams. We got a game here at Bowl. What a beautiful day at Boulder this has been. Great thanks to Curtis Snyder. He gave us a wonderful welcome, took care of everything amidst the circus this can be. And, and we want to say hi to Dave Platty today, a legend of Colorado athletics. We know Dave's watching. And if Dave Platty were here, he would have told us that it's like the 27th tackle for loss this year by a Colorado defensive back on the right side of the field. <laughs> Come on, Dave, I know you would. Detail. Detail. All right, we're getting down to it. Still 11 and change, as you see, but which side can engineer a drive first? Tackle for loss there makes it second and 13. Oh, free runner. And Fafita stood in there and delivered. There is a flag down. McMillan took the catch. Shiloh Sanders. 
the free run right into the midsection of Fafita. Pass interference, offense, number 84, 15 yard penalty, second down. Well, for all the talk, and Jed Fish, that face tells you a lot. For all the talk of Colorado penalties, Arizona has hurt themselves uncharacteristically. That's their eighth penalty. You see this, a little pick play right there with the right arm. Well, I don't know about that. I don't know about that either. I don't agree with that call. So second and 27 now for Arizona. In the middle of the field. Short game there to A.J. Jones. I tell you what we're hearing right now too is the other part of what this year has meant for Colorado football, the students. They're all here. The students are still here in the fourth quarter. They're going nuts. It's kind of what this is supposed to be about. Jacob Cowing, we believe, has gone to the locker. We don't see him on the sideline. So Arizona missing a huge weapon here. And the penalties have put them in these long downs and distances a lot today. And they still have 31 points. Free runner again. Long shot for McMillan. And he almost maneuvered around Milliner Jones. The pressure came from Silman Craig. Multiple defenders pressure and he's just throwing it up, taking a shot. We've seen T-Mac come down so many times. This is the one time he doesn't jump back into the DB. If he does, the DB's not looking towards the ball. He's got a chance at a PI, but because he doesn't, it's a good no call from the officials. Wow. Well, again, the Arizona penalties have been so damaging, major penalties that have repeatedly put them in long distance downs. And they haven't survived, so Austin Dorp will punt fifth time. Good coverage there. That's well done. Pristine punt coverage. That's trading Stukes down. Well, we said a defense was going to have to rise up. They both have. What happens next? We'll find out when you come on back all locked up. Terry Veterans Day. Our crew members. Garrett's father and brother, Michael and Jason Mann in the Marines. Jason Armini, our outstanding TD. William, his son in the Marines. Jason Cotlier on camera. Dad, Ron, our son Ron, rather, in the Air, or not, Ron is the father in the Air Force. Gerhard Baumet in the Army. Airborne Sam Pohl is the father of our legendary Sam here in the Army. James Huppert in the Navy. Robert Ferraro, John Boyd, Anthony Taylor, all in the Navy. And... And look at that fight. Look at that drive by Hankerson. Well done. To liven up the crowd, get a bunch of yards, and of course, we can never function without the inimitable Mike Scoville, the pride of Tucson, the pride of Raytheon, and the United States Navy. And we welcome and we honor all of our crew members and their families who've served. And I'm guaranteeing you, Scoville's family's eating at Applebee's today. Second and two. Well, Yogi, the up and down's kind of stopped here. We're head down towards it'll be under nine minutes next snap. Who can string some first downs together? This game eventually, when it ends here in about nine minutes, I think it's going to come down to which defense can make a play on the line of scrimmage or which offense can spring a back for a chunk, a chunk play in the run game. Colorado hoping they can get to the six win mark. Arizona's there. They're hoping they can stay alive and play the last two weeks with a chance to get to the champ game. Norton's going to get through, and Shador gets out of trouble incomplete. So now fourth down and one at your own 44. Beyond your call. And that's what was so interesting about that play call. Third and short. 
You ran the ball well on first down, struggled on second down. They tried to get a crossing route. They call it a mesh concept. Colorado's had a lot of success. Arizona was all over it. And now they're trying to use that weapon, which has been your punt. Yeah, exactly. That's what Deion Sanders' choice is. It's been Mark Bassett from Melbourne, Australia, has been excellent today. It's this one, the end over end kick with the angle, and it's going to go out of bounds inside the 10. Well, the punt game here is in good shape. Oh, yeah. That's Louie, I think. This is a guy that I've played with. This is a guy that um, who's been my best friend since eighth grade. Uh, and that we're talking about six, seven years of just playing with each other. So um, there goes it. There's a fact. There's a factor where you need a play to be made. I know wholeheartedly that he's going to make it. Um, just as, as a player, but even as a person, knowing the competitiveness, the clutch gene he has. Um, well, there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of belief in him and his ability. A first down, Arizona at their eight. DJ Williams, he may have made back the line of scrimmage, but that connection with McMillan's going to be more vital now. Jacob Cowling has come back on the field, but there he is, no helmet. Yeah, yeah well, he said it. The clutch gene it, for Arizona to get this win on the road, he's going to have to be clutch. They're going to have to find a way to continue to feed him. And if I'm Colorado, yes, you could put number 12, Travis Hunter, on him. But I find a way to have two defenders' eyes on him at all times. He lines up in the slot. Field position, this game has been won by Colorado. And Arizona has to get their way out of this hole here. Good job by Speedy Luke. And a great catch by McMillan. He should have a first. Wow. 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 That's, I wonder about this That mark. is not a good spot right now. He got now. the ball at the 20-yard line. Watch him climb the ladder. Catches it. Foot's down at 20. This is a terrible spot if that this is. is it. Is this going to be reviewed? This forward progress Jet, Jet is Fish there. Can review, you can review a spot. And Jet Fish has a challenge to use. Wow. I'm a little bit surprised at that. Third and two. There we go. Let's see if that Arizona called a timeout. He may use his challenge here. Again, it's something that I know a lot of fans still don't realize because we don't see it often. But college football coaches have one timeout, or one challenge rather, per game as long as you have a timeout. That's what's happening here. But we're going to watch this, and here's what the review booth looked at. And uh, we are repeating verbatim the decision here is that momentum, the offensive player tried to make a move, and I have no idea what they're talking about. I don't see that at all. No. But anyway, in the immortal words of Don McClain, let's move on. It is third and two, so Arizona has lost a timeout. And Fafita's got McMillan, but he can't hang on. Roderick Ward was closing in, and McMillan could not hang on. And that will force an Arizona punt. You'll see his eyes just come off, but he's usually so natural, he's so gifted with his hands. He doesn't have to look everything in, but right at the end, it hits his hands, and you see his eyes look to the defender. Don't see that very often from number four. Well, it's tough to swallow on the Arizona side because McMillan had made a terrific catch that they felt and I would certainly agree was a first down catch. Instead it is a punt here. Weaver and he does a nice job boy. This is a this is a story and right now probably the number one story in this game. That's an 18 yard punt return. Colorado has already had touchdown drives in this game of 36, 48, and 35 yards with no turnovers. All of them set up by the punt game. And this one's going to be 
at the 49, at their own 49. 49 Got to give this staff a lot of credit. Trevor Riley, the former Utah Ute, is a man who oversees special teams. And now you start to look at the clock, and I wonder, how does Pat Shermer call this? Shadur Sanders fires on already Colorado in scoring position on the pass to Weaver. So Weaver with an excellent punt return and now a catch. His fifth of the game. Good for 23. He's done an incredible job, Ted, of finding zones, sitting in those zones and coming back to the quarterback. You don't see him drifting at all towards a safety or into another area. Hunter's in the game. He's on outside the hash at the bottom of your screen. And a little run play here with Anthony Hankerson. And he does get he gets a few yards there, gets four down, uh, four yards on first down. When he talked to Deion Sanders yesterday about, hey, if we could be inside your headset, what would it sound like, especially in situational football? He said, I'm always trying to stay a step ahead. So right now he's on the headset talking to Pat Shermer, looking at the clock, knowing the reality of their field position. Again, Travis Hunter, hash mark bottom. Sanders looking right. Throwing right, stop around, broken up at the end. I think broken up. Takario Davis, the cover. Weaver had it. Let's see how close it came. This is impressive. Watch Davis at the end turn his head, sees the ball, then turns again. Kind of that baseball turn. Uses his right arm. Quarterbacks coach John Richardson has done a heck of a job with those long corners on the outside, playing the ball for the majority of this game. So third and six. I wonder if this is field goal time if they don't get it. Flag first. I don't know if they got it off. False start. Offense, number 77. Five yard penalty. Third down. Now we've had a lot. That's 19 penalties in the game, 11 on Colorado. That's their second false start on the right side of that offensive line. And again, Deion Sanders keeps saying it. You know, all these tight games they've had where they've lost, it's been a handful of plays. Now on a third down, like Jace Feely's their long field goal kicker, be a wonder, does this change the decision yeah. on the play call for sure for Pat Shermer? They've got five wide receivers in the game. Hunter goes up top. He's just at the numbers, the 30-yard line at the top. Sanders stepping up. Big, oh, oh, no, it closed up quickly. A big opening in the middle of the field, but it closed up. And the Colorado sideline wants a targeting or late hit on. Yeah. Four-man rush climbs the pox. He had a great feel for it. Yeah, no, no face mask. Yeah, and a no late hit on Manu is what they're looking at, right? What they're screaming about. Dominic Lelizio, another player, not called his name. Dominic Lelizio made that tackle. And it will be a field goal try here. A 44 yards for Alejandro Mata. 45 is his long. First and now we'll man. see if Dion's going to reassess here. And this is right, right up against the range of Mata. We had a chance to talk to Coach Prime, Dion Sanders yesterday, and he said, "Yeah, right around 42 and in. It's kind of the range." He's made big kicks numerous times this season. So Mata was from Buford, Georgia. 43 is his long. And he's going to try it from 44 right hash. And if he has a, uh, see if he has a little draw on his driver. No, he doesn't. 
doesn't. No good. A wide hash mark strike, because he had that. He had that just a little draw on this ball like Michael Molinari does on his driver. <laughs> a little high. I don't think anybody gets a piece of it, and it's a game of inches. Jed Fish saying, no good. Well, I, you know, the other thing we had to give great thanks to before they put the ball in play here, because thinking about Superb golfer Greg Moraz, Jake Gramondi, Theo Robertson, a Golden Bear, who have done a great job all season for us with research. Got a wonderful prop in the San Francisco Chronicle last week. Well deserved. So just under five to play. Here comes pressure. A little inside screen to McMillan. And you've got to think Colorado's defense is going to swarm number four with Jacob Cowing out of the game. Yeah, I mean, look, they're going to swarm towards Tetero McMillan, and they've been swarming towards Noah Vafita. I mean, they blitzed almost every snap over the last two drives. And the backs of Arizona did a pretty nice job of picking it up, but they're still forcing the ball out of Fafita's hand. Now we're getting to the point again in the game where you think, Colorado's had a huge edge in the punt game. T Arizona should have an edge in the kicking game with Loop. And Coleman busts. And Coleman crosses the 50. And again, the Colorado's won the punt game big time. Ted, watch his patience. And Tanner McLaughlin is in real speed. Patience, patience. Boom. Gets his kick out block. And, and it is fun to watch Joe Coleman run, huh? But now Arizona may have this edge because they're not far away from having a shot with Tyler Loop kicking. That's a great point. A massive leg. Now it's about situational management, positive plays. So first down, under four to go. Coleman! And Coleman is inside the 25. Watch Raymond Polito on the right side of this offensive line right here, along with the tight end. They do a really nice job of just washing down this Colorado defensive front. And again, the ability and the patience of Coleman to just light a match behind the backside of his right tackle. And he says, oh, I'm going to get a little air. Lucky he's OK. The entire Arizona sideline exploding. And Jed Fish is calmly walking behind the pack, staring at his play card. <laughs> but an amazing scene. Three minutes to go. Wow, that pulled up. I thought he pulled up too soon, but no flags. And McMillan is inside the 15. Yeah, I'm so with that, you. you. That was an illusion to me. I thought Savanaya seven, seven, pulled up too soon. He doesn't move forward. Yeah. But you'll Again. see a nice little block there. Getting the ball out front. And T-Mac on that little inside screen. And now Deion Sanders is going to start thinking about two timeouts that he owns. When to use them. Running play. DJ Williams is inside the 10. Is this going to be one of those? Well, look, you got to manage it now. Because if there's one thing you know Shador Sanders has done, is he's led numerous late game drives. We talked to Pat Shermer, we talked to his father, Deion Sanders. He said he can, he's got that heroic element to him. He wants the ball there. Arizona does not want Colorado to have much of a play clock if they get the ball back. Just call Jay Norvell, Colorado <laughs> State, and ask him. You ain't lying. Again, Deion's holding two timeouts, and he's holding them on second and five. Quick throw. And drag down. Boy, he had a shot there today. A.J. Jones. Could he have broken that tackle from behind? He had a shot at the end zone. Instead, it is third down coming and Colorado timeout. I'll say this for Jed Fish. I mean, here we are late in the game, tied up, under two minutes, and he's given the ball to somebody not named T-Mac, not named Coleman, with Jacob cowing out. It just, it just shows the confidence he has in the system and the players. Surprised they didn't run the ball there. A.J. Jones, second-year player from Ontario, California. 
nice job. And if he breaks this tackle, he's probably going to score. Amen. Yeah. Robert Ward got him. So now third down and four coming at the Colorado. Yeah, it's actually third and three. The ball's at the six, so it's third and three. To me, I'd have some sort of shift motion here. See if you can force Colorado to adjust their alignment. But you are finding a way as they go into empty. They brought QB draw here before, Ted. But I'd imagine Coleman's going to find his way back into the backfield. McMillan's all the way up top. And Hunter's right on him on the line. Some sort of crossing route. Big pressure, quick throw, Lamonius Craig driving, driving. It's going to be first and goal. He's the place blown dead. It is not a touchdown, but it is first and goal. That's the important part. And that changes everything now as Colorado only has one timeout. A significant, I mean, that, that should allow Arizona to take this down to end the game with a field goal kick. How about Noah Fafita at the line of scrimmage? Ted? He makes this audible at the line of scrimmage. He makes the play call to say, okay, we're going to change or whatever the initial call was from Jet Fish to throw it to the guy who was wearing Colorado uniform a handful of months ago. But here's how Jet Fish has to manage this. Do you, do you score? Or do you run the clock? Because with one timeout, you can just easily do the math. Colorado has one timeout. Arizona could kneel twice in the middle of the field and then kick a 20-yard field goal timeout. to end the game. Arizona, their second of the half. Which, which way do you go? If you score a touchdown, you're giving the ball back to Shadour. Yeah, and they have showcased big play ability. Knowing Jet Fish, his NFL background, you see he and Brennan Carroll, I, I think they're going to use the clock here. I, I, I would say it to me, there's no, I wouldn't have a question yeah. personally. I'm kneeling in the middle of the field, and I'm going to kick a field goal on the last play. Here's the audible from Noah Fafita. I just think this is incredible. Remember how the game started for him. See that X with his arms? He's saying, hey, change the play, change the play. Talking to the offensive line, you see the right side talking to one another. Everybody's communicating. It's extremely loud in that end of the field. And then he throws the quick screen. They look at this as an extension of the run game. A little bit of help from everybody to get to the one-yard line with a buck 04 left. Colorado might have preferred that he scored. Oh, yeah. 1,000%. And the play was blown dead, clearly. So there's no argument on that. So the situation, again, is here. Arizona could just kneel. Colorado could use a timeout. Then Arizona could kneel again. And Colorado has nothing to do. And Arizona could, in theory, get this down to... I think Three exact, seconds to kick a field goal. That looks like it's exactly what's going to happen. The way the offensive line even walked to the line of scrimmage. There it is. Neal right in the middle. Deano uses last time out, and now that's it. Now Arizona's in control. They have to snap the ball twice in 59 seconds. Jed Fish can kneel once. Timeout, Colorado. It's their third and final of the half and then kneel twice and run the game clock down to three seconds and take his last time out to win to end the game so again this is just this is where i'm glad i went to math class yeah yeah <laughs> we are too <laughs> but this is where you talk yeah. to your kicker tyler loop you're saying all right where exactly do you want it it's going to be a pat yeah so and i think right now for your your Advising your players, hey, no cheapies here. We don't need anything, no extracurriculars. Absolutely. Offensive line, be ready. Let's not have a self-inflicted wound here. This is about Josh Baker and Noah Fafita right now. That's what it is about. Center to quarterback. Just snap the ball cleanly and then fall down. And how about, you know, you think about timeouts and game management with Arizona sitting with one right now. There's Josh Critical. Baker, center. You're asking, Jed Fish talked about Baker being an unheralded guy on their offensive line. Look at all the big bodies in. Everybody's protecting the bodyguard for Fafita. So now the play clock, there you see it starting. So Arizona does have to snap the ball again. When they do, they can run the same play and then use their timeout at whatever, three seconds, two seconds, whatever they choose. So, so this is great. And here's where Jed's talking to the officials. On one hand, you know, you look at third down, and there's some, there is a school of thought. They're not going to do it here where you would attempt it here on a third down in case it's a bad snap or something. 
Well, this is what you're saying. You have to trust your team to execute what's yep. going to be a slightly longer than an extra point now with the knees. And Jed Fish there again talking to the officials, knows exactly when he's going to call the timeout. But it's fourth down coming, so you only have one shot. You might as well run the clock down to one second. Yep. <laughs> really good management here at Jed yep. Fish and yep. Brennan Carroll, his offensive coordinator. And that's the only the only risk you hit on, Yoke. The only risk of doing this Timeout. is it's fourth Arizona. down. Yep. So the final of the game. The execution of this has to be clean. But in terms of managing the clock at the end, that was brilliant. The key was to get the first down on the pass, the audible play that you pointed out. And just how about the that, that entire drive where they got inside the 15? It's once to A.J. Jones, because Jacob Cowing is out and injured. And then they go the audible to Montana Lamonius Craig. Like, you don't give it to your two most productive players in Tetero McMillan or Jonah Coleman. That just that incredible confidence from Jed Fish within the system with the players executed. Tyler Loop has kicked one field goal today. He's 14 of 16 on the year. The holder is Kyle Ostendorf. The punter. It is 24 yards to give Arizona their seventh win of the year. And there it is. The Arizona roll continues. Their first week as a ranked team in the Jetfish era. They come on the road and they win one without their A game, bluntly. And without one of their A players in the fourth quarter, Jacob Cowan. It's been a joy to watch the rebuild of Arizona under Jetfish. And for Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, Shador Sanders, this team, they do not flinch. They left it all on the grass. And no Fafita, he gets my game ball with the way this game started the first half and how he bounced back. First drive of the third, the audible to set him up for the game winning kick. The final drive was 67 yards, 11 plays, and just a shade under five minutes to end the game on their last possession. And Tyler Lupu hit a bomb earlier in the game. That one again was just a glorified extra point. We had a chance to talk to Jed wow. Fish yesterday. He knew this was a huge test for this team. And for Deion Sanders, he knew his team would respond, but a couple plays away. One missed field goal, one made, and what an incredible afternoon in Boulder. Yep. Well, Arizona football, year three, seven and three. Noah Fafita continues this remarkable run, his first as the starting quarterback. No Fafita, Tetero McMillan. They've done it really ever since they both picked up a football. They found one another. Five minutes. Kicking off the third quarter. It was those two going up against Travis Hunter. One of the greatest catches we've seen in college football. Climbing the ladder wasn't perfect. Had a drop, but he just kept responding and responding and responding. Just absolutely dynamic duo for Arizona. Now you can see where Noah's going. He's going over along with Jed Fish to our desk. You're going to hear from Noah Fafita a little later in the day. Now this was fun. It's, a, it's an incredible scene. As I said before, if you weren't on the field before this game here, you were not trying. <laughs> and despite all that, the road team has to see something they're not used to. And they did it. And they won. And the Arizona fans, a lot of parents that we talked about, <laughs> Continues this remarkable turnaround involving three straight wins, not today, but had been three straight against ranked. Yeah, and look, it's new environment for this Arizona team. All the ranked teams, all the ranked wins, everybody telling them that they've arrived. They met a competitive match today on the other sideline in Colorado, but when they had to be at their best, they were. This crowd, they got the U of A chance going on down on the field. These players should have a Big smile on their face as a lot is in front of them as they still remain in the mix for a trip to Vegas. Tedrow McMillan had nine catches today. Jonah Coleman runs for 179. He had three 
huge runs. Thanks to our terrific crew, Michael Molinari, Scott Barkey, and company. To Sam Polis here and with Yogi Ted. We hope you'll love it. We'll see you next week somewhere. Somebody will let us know soon, please. Meanwhile, let's go to Corvallis.